Hello and welcome to another rocking episode of the Hellion Rebellion Rock and Roll Association. Thank you, Associates, for stopping by. You know, before we get started, uh, we do moments of silence for uh, the people we lost the week prior. Um, this week we lost Miles Francis uh, Goodwin who was the head honcho and the main man behind 70s hard rock outfit, uh, April Wine. So let's do the right thing and uh, give this individual a moment of our silence. Okay, may Miles Francis Goodwin find imbibing in heaven to be just as delectable as the fine springtime Bacchanalian treats that we have here in the mortal realm. So the 1990s, what do we think about when it comes to heavy metal? Most of us think about new metal, the Marilyn Mansons, the Rob Zombies, the Creeds, the Nickelbacks, the Corns, the Limp Biscuits, uh, Chevelle, Tool, all of these groups. <clears throat> but there was another style of very aggressive, hard metal that showed up at this time. Um, a lot of people called it noise rock. A lot of people called it math rock. I I preferred noise metal or noise or math metal. Um, mostly uh, because the chords, the chord progressions in in these groups were so strange. The chords themselves were a lot of times made up. Uh, it always this kind of music had a very aggressive uh, singing style to it, but it wasn't normal metal. It wasn't metalcore. It wasn't hardcore. Even though you could find a lot of these bands on those kinds of compilations, um, the only bands I could think of that really saw the light of day, that, that kind of did this style of music, would be really early Mastodon. Um, and then maybe the Deftones. The Deftones would have been one of those big 90s bands, and, and those guys are big today, who kind of had this chaotic, noisy, sort of metallic sound. I, th I think a lot of these groups were basically taking uh, bands like Palvo, Sebado, The Sea and the Cake, The Promise Ring, and and they were just they were they were just dumping chrome on top of that kind of music and metallicizing them. Uh, is is that's about all I can gather <laughs> out of this style of music. Um, it's definitely alternative in nature. It was definitely influenced by maybe not smells like Teen Spirit Nirvana, but more like Hairspray, Hairspray Queen Nirvana, more like Bleach Nirvana, or like Jesus Lizard, or maybe the, the really early Helmet. Um, so the band in question tonight is a band that comes out of uh, Austin, Texas. They would be around from, I think, 1993 to, I'd say, 96 to 97, and this band is called Sap. On Little Deputy Records, 
one of my favorite uh, in the, in the independent record labels. Other than that, I have nothing to say about SAP. <laughs> um, I don't know anything else about them uh, other than I really wish this band would get back together and uh, put out a uh, proper 12 inch because all they ever did was uh, they put out a split 12 inch and then two 7 inches and that was about it. I know they, uh, they toured a lot between those years, but other than that, that's all we have. So, Sap, let's check them out. I think you're going to like this. Watch, watch, watch. 
I can I I never really understood math rock or math metal. But I guess it's all the chords and 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 how the change-ups are. It's almost like you're you're trying to figure out an equation or something. It kind of makes sense, even though it's a weird label to, to put on something. Um, let's check out the second side. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love this kind of music. It seems like I find something new every time I listen to it.
I could listen to that all day long. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I know that's uh, special music for special people. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed watching me eat some sap. Though this is this is the fake stuff here. I strongly recommend uh, uh, the true maple syrup that comes out of Canada or um, uh, the New England area of uh, the United States. That's the good stuff. So other than that, I love you and I will see you next week. Peace.